there are a couple equations you might see floating around um, for calculating the electric field. And a lot of them use Q, but they use a different Q. And in the past, I've found it's kind of confusing to keep track, so I'm going to explain it. Um, so this first equation here is in terms of the source charge. Um, so this Q here is a, is a source charge. And this E is an electric field um, produced by the source charge. This R here is the distance of separation between a source charge and some test charge that it's affecting. So there still has to be a test charge present for you to use this formula to calculate the magnitude of the electric field. The second equation is in terms of a test charge. And the E in this equation is describing the electric field that is experienced by the test charge. And the F in this equation is the force, specifically the electric force um, experienced by the test charge. And it's important to make the distinction that this formula uses a source charge and this formula uses a test charge. Um, so basically, uh, the reason that this formula right here exists is because you try to take this formula and get it in terms of a source charge. And the way that you can do that, the way that it's derived, is using Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law says that the electrostatic force experienced by something, also sorry, up here I should have probably said electrostatic is a better word than electric electrostatic force. So Coulomb's law says that the electrostatic force experienced by a charge is going to be equal to KQ1, Q2, over R squared, where R is that distance of separation between Q1 and Q2. Um, and what we can do here, and at K is just Coulomb's constant, what we can do here is we can say, let's set, um, let's say Q1 is equal to our source, source charge, let's call that Qs. And let's say Q2 is equal to our test charge, we'll call it Qt. So we can find an expression for the force that's experienced um, between these, these two charges. And that expression is literally just what we see in Coulomb's law, K, um, and then we have our source charge, Q source, and we have our test charge, Q test, and we're dividing it by that radius of separation squared. And then this equation up here that we had before says that the electric field is equal to the force, the electrostatic force divided by the um, magnitude of the test charge. Um, so we can basically take this expression that we just created for the electrostatic force and we can substitute it into this other equation. And what we end up with is K times the source charge, QS, times the test charge, QT, divided by R squared times QT. And again, I got that literally just by taking this expression here and substituting it into the other formula. And now you'll notice that the test charge cancels and what we're left with is that the magnitude of the electric field is equal to Coulomb's constant times the source charge divided by the distance of separation squared. And that's where we get this formula up here. That's where that originates. So really, you can think of it like this is your kind of quote unquote original formula. And then if you take Coulomb's law, you can uh, do some algebra to get this sort of original formula in terms of your source charge so that you can use it um, if you know the source charge but you don't know anything about the test charge. So the situations I suppose that you should use each of these equations in are different. So the first equation here where you have E equals KQ source over R squared, you can use this if you know information 
about QS, about the source charge. And then the second equation, where it says the electric field is equal to the force over the test charge, you can use this if you know info about the test charge, but maybe not the source charge. So they're useful in different situations. Um, and they're variations of each other, but I think it's an important distinction to make that this one uses the source charge and this one uses the test charge. And hopefully this helps you understand why.